Welcome to the next lecture in the Internet of Things course. And in this lecture, we discuss the Web of Things, which is, I need to underline, not the same thing than the Internet of Things. But by definition, Internet of Things is all of these systems where we have multiple devices participating in together as a network through communication protocols to do something where they can sense the environment, perform such analytics, and actually involve in the app uh, environment by using different actors. The web of things, on the other hand, is the technology to try to make Internet of Things uh, more accessible, for example, is, and especially for developers. So web developing as a topic in general is uh, nowadays one of the main, can I say main, probably, at least it's the biggest, big one, uh, software development area. And those developers, they do have a good experience on web technologies, but they may have a limited experience on different um, sensing technologies, data analytics technologies, communications in general. So why the Web of Things? The idea is to make all of these devices accessible through web services or reactable like they are web services. Uh, so as mentioned, we do have this huge capability of different devices, different uh, technologies, heterogeneous devices, uh, devices of different capabilities, applications of different application areas. So this is a very heterogeneous environment. And we, to make an application on top of that environment, it the better depends on the skills of the developer to actually know how to program all of those embedded devices. A lot of very low level languages from C to assembly and, and whatever is the language used by the, the uh, device or sensor or embedded system. Then we have different networks, network structures, net network uh, <coughs> entities. We have robotics, we have vehicles, different uh, computing platforms. That means that it's actually not that easy to learn all of those uh, languages, all of those technologies and frameworks. But if we can present all of those as uh, web services, then it makes it for a developer pretty much easier to actually make a new applications. And it also means that the systems became more broadly penetrated in the communities because we have more applications. If there was a very high level skill set required to have something to done in programming way, of course, it means that only a limited number of people can actually uh, develop those applications. But whenever we get more people to participate in building the community of Internet Links, also means that we do have a more applications, more new features for the users, new solutions for technical problems. In the Web of Things, we add four layers on top of the traditional uh, TCP IP or whatever is the networking layer. So we are not taking out the actual internet networking, but we are adding something to give more um, features in this uh, web of things rest api so it's a rest type api um, means that we can get those uh, different devices in the network more accessible first of all uh, we have uh, the access layer that basically manages the access to directly to the devices the devices being the things in the internet of things we have a finding layer or findability, giving a definitions where the devices are, where the resources are, how we can react to those, uh, and find those resources. Sharing layer, managing the sharing of the data, sharing of the resources, and compose layer for integration and such higher level abstraction. And important to mean that we do have the traditional uh, traditional TCP IP or traditional IP, whatever is the uh, other protocol uh, stack on there. 
So this is a picture uh, from Wikipedia, yes, I know. Uh, but this is a nice picture. It shows all of the layers. So in the bottom, we have the traditional networking infrastructure, including different technologies like a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ethernet, uh, QR codes, NFCs, mobile networks, different Gs, uh, and all those devices. So these are pretty um, standard kind of internet uh, networking uh, strategies. But we also have more specialized IoT uh, uh, protocols like ZigBee uh, in, in, in the, the lowest level layer. So instead of using the standard TCP IP, we can also use other protocols on, on the bottom approach to make the actual communication happen. But yeah, then coming up, we have the access layer where we have different um, uh, also quite familiarly sounding protocols for performing the access, whether these are URLs, gateways, uh, proxies, web sockets, JSON standards, different REST APIs. And then I want to highlight a couple of protocols we will discuss later in this course, which are the GoApp and MQTT. And we are going to discuss those uh, specialized IoT protocols later in the course. In the findability layer, we are interested in schemas, semantics, links between the items, links between the data, links between the resources. So how these different single devices are actually linked together to make the network and combine the operations in one single network. A sharing layer where we are looking for uh, tokenization, uh, building up the networks, uh, authentication issues, delegation issues. And then finally, in the very top, the compose layer, the most abstract layer, where we are putting everything again together. And this is where we provide different API operations, for example, for the web developer to e easily use. So, so that doesn't sound that easy immediately. There's a lot of things happening here, but it's definitely easier than taking these single devices in a very low level and using only them without any abstraction between. So this really helps with the abstraction, giving a structure for things, giving an easy to access in, in different uh, devices, different networks of the devices and data and resources, computational capabilities, and so on. But the problem here, so as I mentioned, this is one view of doing things. This is one uh, probably quite good way because this is well known. The web developer developing is very quite well accepted in the community in general, but the standardization is a key thing here. And standardization means that we define which sort of APIs, which sort of technologies are supported, what are what is there are available in this standard. And <coughs> in addition to standardization, we also have this other term I'm using a lot, which is the regulation. In a regulation, we are then discussing a little bit different thing. It's more about the uh, EU level decision making, governmental level decision making, national or international regulations about which uh, standards we can use, what safety mechanisms we should provide, the data processing mechanisms. And, and the regulations are close to the law. And then of course, in the very most strict uh, in any IT systems is always the delicate law for that. And keep in mind these things, standardization mainly done by people actually knowing the name technologies, actually participating in organizations where these uh, standards are delivered. Regulation, more about the decision making, how these things should be used, more higher level in considering societal issues, considering national issues, if they are different to international picture. And then we have a law where 
most of the people doing these decisions are the lawmakers and, and people specialized in that. And that's also a key reason why things are not so super fast always. But this is coming. And in the next lecture, we will cover different things. So thank you for listening to me.